Hello, all of you. So, chapter three, Grendel the Murderer. I told you I would do these videos. Getting to them, finally. Now, have your PDF open or some way to read along. And let's get to it. So, Grendel the Murderer. Grendel attacks the sleeping heroes. When the sun was sunken, he set out to visit the lofty hall building. Now, here's a note about that lofty hall building. That is Hiroth. That is Hrothgar's famous mead hall. This is where they gather. This is where they're hanging out. Everything happens here. So for you all, it's kind of like the square. It's kind of like the old gym at the elementary, the National Guard. It's all of it. Everything happens there. The fairgrounds as well. That's one of those just central points of their civilization, of their, I guess, town, if you want to put it that way, of their village. How the Ring Danes had used it for beds and benches when the banquet was over. Then he found there reposing many a noble asleep after supper. Sorrows, sorrow the heroes, misery knew not. The monster of evil, greedy and cruel, tarried but little. And so we're going to pause here again. I told you they do everything here. If you back back up. And it says, hey, after they ate there, they would like, yeah, feast, drink, all that great stuff. Perfect dream talking about this in my bar. But after they did all of that, they'd crash on the benches, on the floor, on the tables, just kind of anywhere. So, I don't know, think about it like a frat house or something. They eat, they get drunk, they crash around. Okay? Now, it says greedy and cruel, tarried but little. Let's use our context clues here. Whenever Grendel came to Hirot because he was so upset, like, they were disturbing his sleep, man, okay? He went straight there. He did not waste his time. He did not sit there go, oh, I'm going to go over here, chill out. No, he went straight there. That's what that's saying. He drags off... 30 of them, and devours them. He killed and ate 30 people. 30 people, y'all. Fell in frantic and forced from their slumbers. 30 of Thamen, thence he departed. So he came, ate 30 people, and left. Skip straight out of town. So, in the middle of this bloodbath, the rest of the warriors are waking up. And, of course, you know how that's going to go over. It's not going to go over well. You know, you wake up and your brother in arms are being eaten. Yeah. <clears throat> Leaping and laughing, his lair to return to was surfeit of slaughter, sallying homeward. In the dusk of the dawning, as the day was just breaking, was Grendel's prowess revealed to the warriors. A cry of agony goes up when Grendel's horrible deed is fully realized. So, in those meetings, in the midst of this bloody battle, in the middle of a the hall, they're all waking up, probably still a little drunk, and they see their fellow people getting killed, their fellow warriors getting killed and eaten. It wasn't until dawn with his departure that they looked around and realized it was 30. It wasn't five, it wasn't ten, it was 30. And that's the only point that's still being made here is that he came and he viciously attacked Herod and ate 30 people. Then his meal taking finished, a moan was uplifted. 
Morning Cry Mighty, the man ruler, famous. That This is Hrothgar. That's who they're talking about, the ruler of man. So this would be their chieftain. This is the king. The long-worthy Athling sat very woeful. He's upset. He's mourning. He's just lost 30 of his warriors. Suffered great sorrow. Sighed for his liegemen. And so he is mourning his warriors. Now, this is a good time to bring up an old adage that relates to this. Because this is part of the underlying meaning of that. Now, a lot of you hear things like blood is thicker than water. But what you don't hear is the full saying. The full saying is actually the blood of the covenant. That means the blood of those that you go into battle with. The blood of those that you fight with, that you struggle with, that is thicker than the water of the womb. So that means that just because you came from the same mother, you may not be as close as those that you actually suffer tragedy or suffer victory, I should say celebrate victory, uh, suffer losses with. Those people that you have to fight alongside and you have to really push together to win and be successful. That bond is closer than just being a sibling. Because especially in this time, those siblings may not have necessarily grown up alongside of each other, depending upon how many years are they're apart, how many, um, yeah, where people are going to train, where this, that, and the other. They may not have even been around each other as much because it was such a different culture. Now, Hrothgar would have ruled and fought with these men. They had a close bond. Think about, I'm going to use you football players in my class. I'm going to use you and basketball players. My girls are powerlifting. You have to go work out together. My track people, so my sports, uh, my cheerleaders, definitely all too. And my band. So Matthew, yeah, you too. All of you. Think about training and practicing with your teammates. You have to develop a close bond with them. You have to be able to understand who they are. You have to be able to work with them and complement, not complement, the one with the E, not the I, each other. So whereas you're strong and somebody else is weak, you have to bring those together. To help each other. So Hrothgar would have been through all this. With those men. Who got ate. By Grendel. Okay. Now. That's something you can bring up later. So the blood of the covenant. Is thicker than the water of the womb. That's why Hrothgar is acting the way he's acting. That's why he is so upset. So he is mourning. He is suffering this loss. When they had seen the track of the hateful pursuer, the spirit accursed, too crushing that sorrow, the monster returns the next night. So he just came and ate 30 people. The next night, he's going to come back. To loathsome, to loathsome and lasting. Not longer he tarried. He went straight there. But one night after continued his slaughter, shameless and shocking, shrinking but little, for malice and murder, they mastered him fully. He was easy to find then, who otherwhere looked for a pleasant place of repose in the lodges, a bed in the bowers. Then was brought to his notice, told him truly by token apparent, the Hall Thane's hatred. He held himself after, further and faster, who the foemen did baffle. So, Grindel comes back night after night after night and basically kills as many warriors and eats them after they eat and drink, celebrate, you know, make merry. So they're bonding, they're bonded, they're 
hanging out with each other. And so eventually they're not going to hang around her here anymore. They're going to go sleep somewhere else because they don't want to wake up dead and eaten. So ruled he and strongly strove against justice, lone against all men, till empty up toward King Hrothgar's agony and suspense last 12 years. So this goes on for 12 years. The choicest of houses. Long was the season. 12 winters time tortured. Suffer. The friend of Shieldings. Every affliction. Endless agony. Hence it after became. Certainly known to the children of men. Sadly in measures that long against Hrothgar. Grendel struggled. His grudges he cherished. Murderous malice many a winter. Strife and rementing and peacefully wished he what life low to lift from no liegeman at all of the men of the Dane folk for money to settle. No counselor needed count for a moment. And so in all that, like I said, this lasted for 12 years. Every winter, whenever they would have just kind of been like, okay, we need to survive the winter. We're going to kind of hang out more and hear out more. Mm -mm. Nope, they're not doing that. And this was just a torment to Hrothgar, King Hrothgar, because he would not have been able to deal with it. He did not have his famous mid hall, which had built up a reputation of being the place to be. And then all of a sudden, everybody's too scared to be there because he's got this monster coming, killing them, eating them, which was one of the worst sins. Now, here's your note because we're about to run into it. In Beowulf, when it was written, because it's one of the earliest written pieces for English literature, not in the earliest, one of the earliest, because we're not going to get in that fight. Now, there's going to be a mixture of both Christian and pagan religion. And so we're going to get into that in just a little bit. I'm just giving a little heads up. It's both in here. On handsome amends at the hands of the murderer. Grendel is unremitting in his persecution. The monster of evil fiercely did harass the ill-planning death shade, both elder and younger, trapping and tricking them. He trod every night, then the miscovered moor fens. Men do not know where witches and wizards wander and ramble. So the foe of mankind, many of evils, grievous injuries often accomplished, Horrible hermit Herat he frequented. Gem bedecked palace when night shades had fallen. God is against the monster. This is God with a capital G. Notice that. So we know that's the Christian God. So basically, Grendel has taken over Herat in a sense. He's not living there. He's not staying there. But every time he hears happiness every time he hears noise he's running back and and i and killing everybody and eating them or at least as many as he can and remember that first night he got 30 men 30 warriors keep that in mind i had to find my spot again all right, so God is against the monster. Since God did oppose him, not the throne could he touch. So again, like I said, we're still, that's a Christian reference there. At that time, kings were thought to be touched by God. They were very much blessed by God in the way they were looked at. The light flashing jewel, love of him knew not. Notice capital H for the hymn that's reference to God. Twas a fearful affliction 
to the friend of the Skildings. The king and his council deliberate in vain. In other words, they would sit there and think and try to figure out what, how to fix this problem, but it was in vain. That means they were not successful. Soul crushing sorrow, not seldom in private, sat the king in his council. Conference held they, what the braves should determine against terrors unlooked for. They invoked the aid of their gods, lowercase g. This would be the pagan gods. Uh, most pagan religion has several gods. So notice that it is plural and it's lowercase. This is one way in our English grammar that we note whether it's Christian or pagan is with that capitalization or a lack of capitalization. So very important to pay attention to what it is and not to change it. Okay. At the shrines of their idols, often they promised gifts and offerings. Earnestly prayed they, the devil from hell would help them to lighten their people's oppression. Such practice they used then, hope of the heathen, heathen. hell they remembered. Then in innermost spirit, God they knew not, the true God they do not know. Judge of their actions, all wielding ruler. Notice that some discapitalization in there as you're looking through your PDF copy. Some of those are references to the Christian God. Now, of course, you know with the first letter of the line, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about all wielding ruler. Now, no praise could they give the guardian of heaven, the wielder of glory. What will be his who through furious hatred his spirit shall drop to the clutch of the fire no comfort shall look for wax no wiser well for the man who living his life days his lord may face and find defense of his father's embrace so getting into the end of this section of beowulf pretty much it set up this kind of idea that everything is hopeless against grendel Nothing they've done has fixed the problem. Nothing they have been able to do has defeated this monster or protect Herat from Grendel. Now, I need to give you a note about Grendel, and it is a Christian reference. Grendel is thought to be the son, or not the son exactly, the, a descendant of Cain. Now, if you remember from any of your Bible studies, if you ever went, or if you just happen to kind of know the Bible, you might know the story of Abel and Cain and Abel. Cain was the first murderer, according to the Bible, because he killed his brother, Abel, in a jealous fit. Now, Grendel is thought to be the descendant of Cain, so he is the descendant of evil, because he's not human, he's a monster. And so, really, he's the descendant of the first major evil, and the first act against another man and this ties into the whole idea that he's going there and he's killing men and he's eating them this cannibalism is so taboo in most of this culture that this is one of the most evil things they can think of and this is what Grendel is doing and they cannot figure out a way to defeat him so as you're answering your question Keep in mind what Grendel is doing and keep in mind how awful it is. In one night, 30 people, he kills and eats 30 people. That's a lot. Um, and as he's killing and eating 30 people in one night, he comes the next night. And he continues to come. For 12 years. And nothing the king can do. The nothing he and his council. Can think of. Works. It does not fix the problem. So continue with your work. Click the question. Next. And post your answer. Take care. I'll talk to you later. Bye.